welcome uh, Banjul Night Live. Welcome to the Global Hans Mandua Development Hub, located here uh, uh, in in, um, in Mandua, which is just about uh, a few kilometers from Birkama. My name is Mamoudou Sala and uh, my full-time job is to teach at the Montfort University as a senior lecturer in the UK and uh, my, uh, my passion is actually being the chair of Global Hands International and Global Hands International is like uh, a social enterprise in, in the UK and a charity in the Gambia that is all about building capacities. Uh, we have got four main areas of operation. One of them is about publishing, so we publish like books. Uh, we've published about seven books over the last two years. We also have got an academic journal called Journal of Critical Science and Studies, uh, which is all about challenging uh, counter uh, uh, orthodoxy and then promoting counter orthodoxy perspective, critical voices from the South. Uh, we also have got um, Global Hands International. So this Mandua Development Hub and the fact that we've been bringing students uh, to the Gambia to actually um, kind of like engage in experiential learning is another thing that we do. Uh, we also got education and public engagement. How do we work with people, uh, kind of like uh, to provoke consciousness and support them to take action? How do we work with them, for example, uh, to, to, to help them build their capacities? So from projects to, uh, to, to seminars, to conferences, we do that kind of thing as well. And the last bit is Global Hands chapters. Uh, we've got a chapter in the Gambia called Global Hands Gambia. We've got Global Hands London, Global Hands um, uh, Leicester, and Global Hands Demonford University. And we are also about to expand into other countries as well. I'm incredibly honored to be part of this uh, amazing organization geared towards building the capacity and honing the capacity of uh, emerging um, young Gambian leaders and even across uh, the border. That said, however, the Mandua Development Hub, an initiative of Global Hands and supported by the great people of Mandua, is a center geared towards uh, unlocking the potentials in the areas of entrepreneurship, research, health, agriculture, and the rest of it, where young people begin to feel um, an important part of a development process. Uh, welcome, follow me, let's go around, show you what's happening here. Uh, in terms of um, one of the elements would be uh, international development. It's about how do we build the capacities of other people. Because you know, if you look at inequality, global inequality, if you look at kind of like uh, poverty, underdevelopment, uh, uh, these are issues that we can do something about. So the way we do it is like one, we build the capacities of people. Like this Mandua Development Hub is all about building capacity, working with local people, working with people from different parts of the Gambia, but also outside the Gambia to build their capacities to be able to take care of themselves. But we also uh, kind of like work with Demonford University so that our students on different courses can come to the Gambia and engage in a 10 day, 11 day kind of like um, what we call development school, where they learn about history, around history, around slavery, around colonialism, in a practical way, by visiting the museum, by going to James Island, by going to Fort Bullen, and looking at uh, kind of like how history, has Im uh, how history impacts on the current state of affairs. We're in the process of constructing a library, and as you can see, we're using uh, the sustainable uh, compressed bricks. Normally, when you, like, when you use a bag of cement, you could get about 30, 35 bricks out of the bag of cement. You also uh, use a lot more sand and, and everything else. We're using the, the, the compressed bricks, which is more sustainable, where one bag of cement would give you uh, about 200 to 250 bricks. And then you also get the clay from the ground. Instead of going to the beach to mine the sand, you use the clay. So you could use maybe 10 wheelbarrows of clay that you can dig uh, from the ground. You can use one bag of, one wheelbarrow of sand um, and then kind of like one bag of cement. And that can give you the 200 to 250 bricks and that is more sustainable. But also the bricks, you've been into the room. But you, I, could, I don't know whether you can notice actually, it's a lot, coo a lot cooler because of the sustainable bricks that have been used to, to actually build it. So where, whilst it's very hot outside, it's, it's maintaining the room temperature and it's very, very cool inside. And that's part of the technology that we've been able to train young people from the village to use as well and to develop. Where actually it's very hot right now, but when you go into the room, it's kind of like quite cool. 
and it's almost like uh, because of the mud that is used to manufacture the bricks it actually insulates the room and quite nicely so so it's better for the environment it's cooler it's actually more usable as well and what we've done is to work with the people of Manduar and you've met with Fansu uh, the young people and transfer this technology so that they can start building it themselves and that's what we've used mainly to build the hub in, in total Okay, um, here is the main hall. Um, it's called the DMU Hall. It's been named after Demon Forge University. It can take up to 300 people and it's a multi-purpose hall as you can see. It can be used for seminars, for conferences, for weddings, for parties, for whatever. But it's a resource that the community can use, but also uh, the whole Gambia uh, can use. It's also hosting a lot of students at the moment from Demon Forge University who have been coming here on a regular basis. No, no, it's, it's quite humbling because there's so many people, you know, who work with me to make things happen. I'm just a small part of it. But, um, you know, all the universities in the UK were asked to nominate their best lecturers. And then when they nominated their best lecturers, six of us were shortlisted. And, at the, uh, um, you know, after the shortlist, we went to an award night, which is like an Oscar event where, you know, all our work was listed. And I think there were a thousand people, you know, and they sat down. And then when they when they listed our work and um, and probably they called me out and said that I, I won the award and probably I had my mouth open just staring and said yeah hey, are you talking about me? it was actually quite funny um, but no it, it's been good and it's drawn a lot of attention to the projects and I hope it translates into more positive energy and more support I mean you know that when people sometimes it's difficult for people to believe in what you do and people do not come out to support especially those who just come out. And the, the award has kind of like uh, almost validated what we do when people couldn't believe and understand what we were trying to do. Now with the award, a lot more people are, are sitting up and taking notice. So in that way, it's positive. But it doesn't change who we are and what we do because, you know, we believe that it's our duty, our moral duty to make a difference. And using academia and, and, and practice together to make that difference is good. And if that is recognized as the most innovative piece of practice, then, you know, I'll take that. As you can see here, here's the main dining area um, using locally made bamboo uh, kind of like um, uh, uh, furniture um, and it can be used as a dining area as well as like a group workspace that people can use for that purpose. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been tough. I mean, we got this piece of land with like a burnout out building um, in January 2014 and uh, in January 2015 we opened this place already so we, we we did not get funding people assume that we got a lot of money but we actually have not received funding from anybody all the funding we have raised ourselves you know we got some of my students kind of like going standing up together with me selling uh, cakes and drinks and, and raising the funds and uh, organizing fun runs organizing talent shows you know you know listen there's so many things going wrong and there's so many things that need changing that we cannot afford to be bystanders we cannot afford to get all the money we need to start making things happen. We gotta do what we can whilst we can. So for me, it was all about, you know what, let's make it happen. You know, with or without funding from anybody, we will do our best and we will make it happen. Okay, like you see here, here are the Global Hans Gambia members. They're having a meeting, planning what else they're gonna be doing. And you know, because Global Hans has got a chapter called Global Hans Gambia. And, and these are the young Gambians who've been doing all of this amazing work. So it's great to meet them here. I think just coming here and featuring us, it, it's quite powerful because you're exposing us to a different audience. Um, but it's just, you know, we, we, we're just a bunch of four, you know, crazy people who woke up one day and said we want to bring a change and we just did what we could. And, it, you know, it's almost insignificant compared to what needs to be done. But we're doing our little bit, so we, we welcome people who want to come and join us, you know, who want to kind of like uh, contribute to the whole process. I mean, uh, we've got a website on uh, www.global-hands.co.uk. We're on Facebook, uh, Global Hands Leicester, uh, and we're also on Twitter. So, so I think people can, can get in touch with us. We're always willing to get positive energy to join the efforts. And we need all hands on deck in order to build a better Gambia. So please reach out, get in touch. You know, let's make things happen. One of many highlights of this trip is delivering the literary workshops. I've had the privilege to deliver the first project at the hub while it's still being built. I've learned so much from the Young Gambians 
they're all positive and they all they all help each other build their own dreams. Banjul, big up to Banjul Night Life. You know, keep doing what you're doing. You, you're touching lives, you're touching hearts, and and it's making a big difference. And you know, I'm just saying that let's not be bystanders. Let's do something. Let's do the little that we can, and hopefully it can make a difference. You know, if we have a moral duty to actually uh, to build a better place, you know, that our children will inherit. And whatever little thing that we can do, whether it's you know contributing five pounds every year, whether it's actually having those conversations to bring about change to provoke consciousness, or whether it's about just coming down here, kind of like um, you know making a difference. But the thing is, like talk is cheap. You know, let's let's do things. You know, let's talk. But you know, after we we're done talking. Let's, let's make things happen. Let's get on the ground. Let's, no, let's do the little that we can. It can go a long way.